This is going to be another one of my weapon videos, and this one is going to be focused on Kevin's weapon. Now, this is probably one of the higher priority weapon videos to actually make, because Kevin is, of course, a core component of the Bleed Synergy. So his weapon here is going to be quite a high priority upgrade for a lot of players. And also, just the effect of him generally and his weapon as it gains stars is quite hard to visualize in terms of what is actually going to contribute in a fight. So I, as always, have all the details in a Discord tab, and we'll go over all of this. It gets very, very mathy, and we'll go over exactly what his weapon is going to be bringing to you. So as a quick note before that, Kevin's weapon will be, with the current store schedule, be in the shop every Thursday. Previously, with the previous schedule, he was actually in store for three days of the week, which meant you could coupon on him and buy him very, very easily. Now it's only Thursdays, so it's a bit harder. You have Path of Ascendance today. You have Merchants of King's Landing on the Wednesday. But sourcing coupons for his weapon is going to be a lot more difficult than it would be previously, and also compared to just other weapons, because Monday coupons, for example, don't stretch to the Thursday. So it can actually be quite awkward to buy into his weapon now, but it is still very good nonetheless, and I'll show exactly how right here. So first of all, his base effect, when each allied lineup in the front row uses a normal attack, there is a 15% chance of granting a shield to the allied lineup of the greatest losses, double chances for melee unit types, that means it's a 30% chance to proc, if you're running, say, infantry, which you're going to be with this, and this granting a shield to the allied lineup with the greatest losses bit. This is why Kevin, of course, counters weakness, because weakness attacks themselves also target the lineup with the greatest losses, and this will be a common theme uh, in the theory crafting of this, is how exactly this counters weakness, and you'll see with the numbers that I end up showing, uh, it, it's fairly ridiculous how a good Kevin, that particularly when the weapon is high starred, becomes against weakness attacks, and you'll really see why, even at the very top end, Kevin will pretty much always have a place somewhere because of that. And then the key thing that you'll find of his weapon is this next bit, reducing 10% non-skill damage for 2 seconds, damage reduction effect stack up to 50%. So this is going to be primarily what changes with the weapons. The base weapon changes no numbers at all, but instead of it affecting only non-skill damage, it just affects all sources of damage. So this will affect things like commander attacks, or commander actives. It will affect things like bleed itself as an effect, things like wildfire from Cersei, and so on and so on. So one star weapon, the 10% stacking goes to 12, the cap increases by 10, and that pattern will continue with 2% more per stack. And plus 10% on the full cap, all the way on the second and the third weapon. And then on the four star of the weapon, the 80% cap will remain, but the per stack part will increase by 4%, which means you'll reach this cap in only four attacks rather than five, which is what you require for base weapon, one star, two star, and three star weapon. So a few key points before I get into all the heavy mathy stuff. Only the front row troops will contribute. So if you're running Imp Cav, only the imp would be able to prop Kevin, so you can't stack Kevin faster than running multiple lines. So 30% proc rate, despite it saying 15% because of the doubled chances tooltip, it of course does proc off of Sonara extra normal attacks. And previously in my testing against rebel groups, uh, it's typically 140 normal attacks with a mono infantry lineup, and that's what I'm going to be mapping stuff out from in this. This number can vary depending on the fight, of course. Like if you're attacking someone's castle and it takes a while to get through their wall, naturally, just because there's less time to attack, this number will be lower. But this will be the baseline we go up there. This stuff isn't too important. It's just what I'll end up mapping out down below. This Sonara formula is slightly different to what I've put out there previously. That will be detailed in my previous video. The TLDR of it is basically that it accounts for the fact that, say, the second batch of extra attacks can only proc if the first batch doesn't proc. 
and then the same for the third. The third set of extra attacks can only proc if the first and second don't. So you have to account for those percentage changes and it lowers the numbers ever so slightly to how it was previously. What's the amount of Kevin procs you're going to have is static because of that 30% proc rate. Well, it won't be static, but as mathematical averages, it will be. The variation will come in, into play when you're varying levels of Sonara and her weapon, because you're, of course, getting more normal attacks. But what I'm going to use as a default throughout this is primarily base Sonara weapon, and then vary the, the Kevin weapon levels. Remember that all maths in this will vary a lot because of how RNG this is because of this 30% proc rate, this can skew higher, it can skew lower, it can change a lot, particularly because of the nature of this. So once you reach the cap of his effect, you don't continuously apply further stacks of Kevin's damage reduction. It will just stop stacking until the, the stacks fall off, which means if you stack it really quickly, on say the first second, then in terms of mathematical averages, the, the next attacks would get no value. And by the laws of averages, that will balance out, and you'll then have barren runs where you just don't hit the cap and you don't stack as much as you want. So pretty much all numbers listed here will probably be slightly lower because of practicalities, but it, it's just impossible to account for that too much. So here's where it gets uh, very, very mathy. As I've said, we're only using this number here to math out from. And without lingering too much on the complications there, you can of course pause and look into them a bit more in depth. But the key here is with base scenario weapon, you will effectively get about, on average, 5% more damage reduction shield per second applied to that one lineup with every additional star you get on Kevin's weapon. It will spike higher mathematically on the fourth star. But it, that doesn't account for you hitting the cap quicker. So it's a hard thing to math out because you hit the cap quicker, which is a negative in terms of how these maths work. But of course, you're hitting it faster, which is obviously value in itself. So I shaved off half the value there, which puts it at this, which gives it a nice clear curve of about 25% shield per second to 30 to 35 to 40 to 45 percent effective shield per second. And using these numbers, this is how it would play out in practice. So this, in this scenario, is the first second of fighting. So of course, you'll stack it all the way up in that one second to this average. In practice, you could stack it all the way to 50. You could stack it not at all. But on average, it would be this. But the reason this is lower in value is because, of course, you're attacking them, but they're attacking you as well. So whilst you'll be applying the shield value, their damage can be coming in before the shield actually gets applied. And there's no way to realistically predict how much value that shield is going to be getting, because it's just going to be pure luck on when it's applied, if you get it in before their damage sources, or if you get it in after their damage sources. So I just halve the value as a rough approximation there on seconds that the shield gets stacked on. But then, of course, by the, the nature of it, in this next second, this fifth second stacks are fully stacked already. So that's at the full 25.8% shield. So that's that there. But then, of course, you're getting the other half value shield again because you're stacking it through that second to the cap. And then that process will effectively repeat until the end of the fight. And I have cross-referenced this with my own reports, and this does mirror quite closely. So I, feel, I do feel quite confident about this. But this number here will be primarily what we're going to be using to draw some more conclusions out. The reason it doesn't go higher than this is because, of course, in this scenario, this is the first second of this buff. This is the second second of that buff. And then it would have to, it would drop off here and have to restack through this next second. And of course, when you hit the cap, it can't stack anymore. And you'll see through all these numbers up here, it's pretty consistent that it will require two seconds of attacking of this average shield value to hit its cap. That is very consistent all the way across. So 30 into 60, 25 into 50, 35 into 70. And I imagine that is a very deliberate design decision. But due to that nature of hitting the cap and having to wait for the stacks to fall off to then restack, these are the numbers. You're approximately going to get 
and then if we use that to map out these extra Kevin weapon levels as well. So these numbers here are effectively just 1.5 times these ones up here. These are the numbers you're going to have effectively against weakness when weakness attacks start at least. In practice it will be slightly lower because of course they have their dragon attacking, they have their commander actives, they have their attacks before the healing actually starts and whatnot. I think the, the easiest way to visualize it is what are you getting against those weakness attacks and it will be this. And you can see that the additional levels, because of the increased cap, really skyrockets the effectiveness against weakness. That one lineup starts to become so hard to deal damage to. And you'll see the effect of these further stars as you go down when I do a health comparison at the end here. And of course, against female or bleed, the damage isn't fixated on that lowest health damage lineup. So you have to divide these numbers by 5 effectively, because their damage sources are split equally across the 5 lineups. So your Kevin shield is only getting a fifth of the value as it would uh, be getting against weakness. So these are the numbers you'll be getting against these synergy types. Again, this is with base Sonara weapon. Remember, if, you're, if you have a 4 star Sonara weapon, which if you have a 4 star Kevin weapon, you may well do, these numbers will theoretically be even higher. And then finally, I use a health conversion to just help visualize this a bit more. I'm not sure this is exactly how it works in game, but just as a means of visualizing it. So if you look at this damage reduction value, so here I'm using 1,500% health as a baseline, just to compare this. So here I'm trying to make the numbers match with the damage reduction value here, and then seeing what health value that would require to equal back out to the 1,500. So this is your worst case scenario for Kevin, of course, is you're against female or bleed. You have no synergy counter at all. Even in that scenario here with base scenario weapon, that would be providing you effectively about 120% health through that damage reduction, which as a worst case isn't that bad, particularly when if you go to four star weapon, it goes to about 240% health. You could argue potentially this could be higher in practice too, because Whilst there's RNG elements, potentially, in terms of what is determining the most losses in a lineup, it can just be practical situations. So say you're running Mono Imp and they have a female cab lineup, and they're running, say, Marjorie, Annie, Aria, Layla, Salma. The Layla, Salma columns will be dealing more damage than the other columns just because of their commander actives count you. So if you get the damage reduction into their columns and you hit into their actives, then this number will actually be higher because of that. That's just very hard to account for in these situations. But the big thing about Kevin is, of course, his weakness countering. So a base weapon, and this is just base generally. This is base effect with default scenario weapon. His effect effectively provides 947% health into weakness. This is why he's so strong against those weakness lineups. But you can see when you do the same conversion and comparison at his four-star weapon, this becomes over 3,000% health. The, the, the effect over triples in what it's providing. Now, you may well still get ran through by the top players, uh, even with the full synergy counter. But if you're running bleed, and you have this 4-star Kevin weapon, and you're hitting into weakness, this is going to make you so difficult to beat, because the amount of practical damage reduction you're going to gain against them is just going to be such a mountain to climb, and it'll put you in such a good spot to, to win that fight. So overall, I honestly think Kevin weapon is sneakily one of the better weapons out there. He's awkward because he can only roll total attack, so it's very annoying to get good base attacks on him. And I think because of that, a lot of people, including myself, use like a base attack substitute on him. So like you have your Haley weapon, you have your Chris weapon, you get base attack on them. Of course, you have your Sonara and Raya already. If you've got the higher budgets, you have your likes of John weapon. So Kevin could be quite a nice pick to just get just chuck base attack onto you basically, because it's so annoying to get good base attack on him. But if you can, even if you just want to keep him in your back pocket as a weakness counter, 
uh, you can really see just how big of a difference he's going to be making in those fights. And you're going to be hard pushed to find anything that's going to give you much more of an advantage than this will realistically.